Hopefully this will this will take certainly less than a, an hour. Uh, we'll try to move through this quickly since this is uh, not the typical timing for our meeting. But the reason why I did that is that I'd like to consider two um, two particular topics uh, for discussion and hopefully for consideration to vote as a, a group. But before doing that, I want to start off with approving our uh, February 10th uh, EC minutes um, that I sent to you guys uh, that David, Dave uh, Kathan uh, prepared. So if, does anyone have any questions or comments about that last, um, the minutes from last meeting? Um, Okay, no. great. Bugs? No. Does someone want to make a motion to accept them? I make motion accept them. I'll and second. thank you for doing it. <laughs> yes, thank you for the motion. Thank you for the second, Jack. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, great, that passes. Okay, awesome. Now, the next discussion uh, came to my attention from Jack um, about the fact that we're gonna, why don't you just tell us, Jack, what you found out. I heard that the town truck, and I don't know how old it is, but it is fairly old. Years, I think. Need, uh, pardon? I think it's 10 years old. 10 years old, needed $5,000 or so in repairs. And uh, people are wondering whether it's just buy a new truck. And I suggested, um, that if we buy a new truck, then we require it be um, electric. And an off the wall comment, maybe a cyber truck, but uh, just electric is my agenda. Yeah. So towards that dream, uh, because it is still a dream because electric trucks do not exist, uh, I guess, for the most part, maybe in um, <laughs> prototype states, um, it would be awesome if we could uh, get electric truck. The question is, well, how should we do it if we need this, this truck either replaced or repaired in the near term? So Jack and I discussed the idea of either recommending to the town to lease or buy a used truck for uh, up to three years. Um, and I know that the Tesla Cybertruck, which by the way, is pretty reasonably priced. The low end is at $39,000. Um, and it has a flatbed, which is the same size as any ordinary pickup truck. So it looks sort of weird as a truck, but it, it's sci-fi and God, that'd be just so cool. What a statement it would be for our town to have an electric truck driving around town. We'd have our Pepco charging stations. Uh, and all we really need to do uh, to, to do that is uh, they, they're asking, Tesla's asking for a hundred dollar deposit, which is refundable um, if you decide not to go forward with it. But uh, if anybody wants to add some thoughts to that idea, uh, you know, Matt Trollinger asked that our committee make a formal uh, recommendation to the town council to consider this idea. So I open this up for discussion. So, um... <clears throat> Given it's going to be a, likely a few years before there's a, a competitive field of, uh, of truck, electric truck products, and inevitably the first ones that come out are not necessarily going to work that well or uh, will be subject to heavy depreciation as the technology improves, why don't we have them lease a conventional truck and buy um, uh, green credits or... Um, to offset the uh, pollution from it in the interim. I think okay. that's a great idea. I think we should definitely lease because other things are liable to happen in the next two or three years. And so this way we, we have more flexibility, but I think we should go for leasing something. Okay, so just so, so that I'm clear with your comments, Donna and Andrew, do you feel like leasing is a better option than to buy a used truck from CarMax? Um, or do you, are you distinguishing between the two or just basically just a stopgap measure of- No, I was just thinking that um, uh, if they were buying new, then um, you know a three-year lease might take us into a time frame where there's 
this sort of, uh, I think there's quite a lot going to be happening in electric vehicles in the next two to three years. So, um, you know, that would give it an option if it's still not, not, not um, something that's viable at that point that they can buy at the lease and buy the rest of the truck. Maybe if they're buying, going to buy a used one, then, um, you know, it's a different, it's a different issue. But um, regardless of what they do in terms of purchasing it, I think they should buy the, um, uh, you know, the uh, offsetting credits. Mm -hmm. okay. Jack, before you- How does you, that I, work? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The mm -hmm. same, what type of off, carbon offset credits, um, could you give us an example of one or two? Well, I, um, uh, I go through an organization called TerraPass. So I buy them for my own uh, vehicles and the gas consumption in my house. And they, they run a certified uh, program that ensures that the money you go to goes to genuine uh, offset projects. Um, and they have a, a nationally certified um, process for doing that. And you basically go in, they have a bunch of different calculators depending on what you're trying to offset. But basically for cars, you can put in, um, I think the make and model of the vehicle and then your estimated mileage and it will calculate the, uh, the amount of CO2 uh, credits that you need to purchase. And they're not, they're really not very expensive. Um, I do it for three vehicles and my gas heating for the year and it's about $200 a year. That's great. That's an excellent idea because it, 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 it puts value and uh, awareness to the, the, the amount of tons of carbon dioxide you create and yeah. uh, Jack? Yeah, it would be good to publicize that. I mean, I think that'd be a wonderful thing for the journal or something to let us learn about this. This is great. Yes. And that's going to be that. Let's continue that conversation in um, when we talk about the climate emergency. Uh, that's great. Okay, but the thing about this, the the uh, electric truck, um, I think we should put in there that we do do the hundred dollar refundable deposit for a cyber truck. Period. And I mean that's a no brainer. And okay. we then do the lease or something to wait until we get a cyber truck or any other truck that is viable for the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any other comments or discussions? Uh, points? Um, oh, I didn't know, um, I haven't looked into this, but uh, are there any um, uh, plug-in hybrid trucks on the market? I have never looked into that. No, uh -huh. not yet. <clears throat> not that I know of. I've looked into it myself. <coughs> All right, um, Jack, why don't you take a go at uh, sort of describing the motion that you want to put forward uh, and we can add to it if you forget something or whatever, um, give it a go. Okay, the Environment Committee recommends to the town council that we purchase the future truck as an electric vehicle and in the meantime, lease whatever we need to do until they're available and immediately put down a $100 refundable deposit on a cyber truck. I'll second that. Okay, and before you say that, it can, it, is it okay to, to add two things? One is that it could be either leased or a used car, a used truck purchased, is that, Okay to add that? I don't I think, think that's a good idea. Okay. And can you, okay. Okay, so we can keep it as is. And then the second part is, uh, do, you, do you want to recommend also that uh, during that time that we are at least seeing to be by carbon offsets? Did you say that already? I did not say that, but perhaps it would be a, an additional motion. I don't want to tie them together. Marnie, can we put them together or no? Well, you could, but you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if Jack doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. I just had a question as to why um, you would tie the hands of the person who's trying to um, figure out what is going to be a, a cost effective way for the town to 
have some kind of truck vehicle over the three year period till electric vehicles are available. Mm -hmm. Donna, do you wanna answer that question? You said you were pretty strong about leasing versus buying a used truck. Yeah, I think buying a used truck is just throwing money away. And if we do the lease bit, then we can basically, we have a lot of flexibility. So that if it looks like there's not gonna be a good electric thing out there, well, we can keep going rather than being stuck with a truck that's already old to begin with. Marty, does that? Um, I haven't gone out to price trucks. I mean, if I were trying to buy a car and I was trying to think about leasing versus buying a used car, depending on what the market was like, I'd like the ability to pick something that really fit my budget. And I, I wouldn't necessarily know ahead of time which of the alternatives it would be, but that's just me. Steve? Yeah, th thank you. So I think it's a great topic you guys are digging into. Um, I guess my recommendation is to focus on the environmental aspects, sort of like what Marnie is saying. Um, I mean, does it really matter to the environmental committee whether the town repairs the existing transmission that's, that's apparently is on its last legs, or leases another vehicle, or buys a used vehicle? The point is that you recommend, what I'm hearing is you recommend that the town not buy a new truck until the town is able to buy an electric truck sometime in the next couple of years. And in terms of tying hands, I would further suggest that you not specify Tesla. Um, I understand the Ford 150 is gonna be produced as an electric truck and uh, this year it's being manufactured. It'll be available for sale in 2022 and other vendors should have trucks available. Or if you are set on Tesla, I think you will need to, the environment committee would need to provide some sort of a cost benefit analysis of why Tesla is better than the other options. Kumar put a um, link for future electric pickup trucks, what's coming soon from US News and World Report. So we can all look at that. Yeah, that seemed like oh, cool. a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's my wife is looking reason. at too. Yeah. I think this is a good reason to plan on leasing for whatever time we need to and not go ahead and buy something that is not quite what we would like to have. Well, of course, when we lease something, we are leasing a, uh, a gas combustion truck. So that's not good either, of course. I mean, I think um, you know, the benefits of a new vehicle, um, regardless of how it's financed, whether the town buys it or leases it, um, you know, it, it generally has better performance in terms of fuel economy and emissions generally than an, old, an, an older vehicle. So that's potentially one consideration for a new vehicle. I, I do agree with Steve that um, it's it should, I think it can be up to the town how they decide to finance it. It may, may be a better deal for them to buy it. They can always sell it when everything goes down. But I, I think part of the town's recommendation would be that um, then the, the, the council should be looking at the truck, uh, the, the replacement truck as an interim measure um, and that there the should be some sort of statement of intent that that's replaced by you know, an electric vehicle um, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as there is something suitable available in the market. And that, because otherwise, you know the the you know people tend to sort of buy stuff and then they'll they'll just run it until it's um you know it's going to be replaced which with a new vehicle you know could be another 10 years from now so um, i do agree that there's some perhaps a little more flexibility in financing it with a with a lease but not necessarily you can always just decide to dispose of it after three years and sell it back to you know sell it to carmax or somebody right they'll give you a reasonable price for it. I, I'm starting, I'm, I'm sort of feeling like this is like the age old problem. Should I buy a new car? Should I lease it for three years? Or should I buy 
a used car that's one or two years old. And this is like, a, this is the story that just continues to repeat itself over and over during our lives, lifetime. And I always buy new cars, but I always know that I'm, that the person who's buying a one year or two year old car is probably doing a financially smarter thing. Cause you know, when you roll it off a lot, it loses $5,000 worth of value, blah, blah, blah. You know, my father says leasing is the way to go. You know, I think, I don't think it's as important which way we go. I think we can leave it up to you guys to decide. But I think the, the fact is we, we want to make this an interim uh, stopgap measure until, you know, and the, the goal is to get electric truck. And I do like the idea of adding the, the carbon offsets as a way to demonstrate to the, our town residents that it's not just a stopgap, but we're, we're feeling bad about this stopgap measure because this is, all, this is the best we can do right now. And this is how we're going to still try to be green. Well, and the carbon offsets can, can be applied to the other, I don't know what other existing vehicles the, um, the town has, and also the, uh, the natural gas that the town uses for the swimming pool and the um, you know, heating the town hall and other things. Uh, that's, right, but we, let's know. not confuse those, because that's going to be another issue. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's, that's a separate motion or for discussion later, but... Um, <clears throat> Okay, Jack, well, why don't we to... go back to the what Jack said to begin with, but, but make it a bit more flexible for the town to decide whether they're going to lease or buy. But that we, we've made the statement that we want an electric vehicle, that that's the end goal. Okay. Um, Donna, do you want to give it a go and uh, make the motion? Or, uh, or I can ask somebody else if you don't, you're not comfortable. Well, uh, yeah, why don't we go with what Jack said because he had some extra things there that were nice. Okay, um, Jack, do you wanna say it again? Um, I'm not sure I remember exactly what I said, but um, I would agree to, no, I think we should keep the carbon offset separate. We should have a separate motion perhaps tonight that the town, um, recommends the, or the count the committee recommends the town the carbon offset um, is a uh, thing we want to do but for the vehicle uh, what I said I will stand with okay so but you're open to having it leased or in any way that that they want to purchase this this vehicle for the next three years or a short term yes short term. Short term. Um, yeah. okay i think that seems clear um uh okay so you motioned and donna did second that uh second that right. so i guess we're um ready for a vote so all in favor um raise your hand say aye aye aye, aye. okay great Okay, awesome, moving on. Um, and thanks. Uh, Can I make a suggestion? Please. Uh, if, if you were interested in the carbon offset, you might wanna make that as a recommendation for the FY22 budget uh, and specify which items you think the town should be purchasing the uh, offsets for. Thank you. Okay, let's do right. that. Let's do that in the other ish, other items at the okay. end. Please let me, uh, remind me if I forget everyone. Okay, the next item is the Clearview recommendation, which is Clearview is this energy company that provides 100% renewable energy. Um, I've been recommending that to neighbors to use this company because uh, of the four different 100% renewable companies that are on the PEPCO list of third-party providers. This one just happens to always have the least expensive renewable energy as a um, carbon uh, a credit. Uh, it's not like they're called carbon credits. Um, anyway, Matt has asked that our committee recommend officially to the town to um, take the four PEPCO bills that they pay each month and uh, as you probably all know, because you have maybe you're using this uh, 
third party to basically just swap it, change it over. It's like a two minute process for each um, bill. So it'd still be Pepco, but it, they'll be using the third pro party provider Clearview, which makes it a hundred percent renewable electric energy that the um, town will be using. So I open this up for discussion. Yeah, and it's cheaper than Pepco too. Yeah, so it's I just so, renewed mine. <laughs> it's like a win, 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 uh, slam dunk. I'm not sure what the reason why you wouldn't do it. Um, it's nearly two cents a kilowatt cheaper than Pepco's price. <clears throat> just for those that didn't know, um, Pepco is required to provide like a minimum of like 20% renewable energy to its customers. It might have changed a little bit recently, but that's pretty pathetic. Um, so for some reason, they are not doing it on their own to, to, to provide more as a standard, you know, higher uh, percentages of renewable energy. But any, anyone have comments, questions? Is, is Clearview's cost to the town the same as their cost to us, to individuals? Yeah. I don't know about that. It is a regular Pepco bill, so it's not. We're not like some type of corporate entity or whatever. It's just another uh, Pepco bill, as far as I understand. Seems like a good idea. If if they're you know if we're comparing apples to apples, then let's go for it. Marnie, I can't hear you. Is the town from switching to Clearview? Can you say, state the question again? I lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I just was wondering whether there was any financial uh, like rebate to the town for making the switch from Clearview. Uh, no. Because I recall, I thought when when uh, we we individually switched <clears throat> to Clearview, there was something. Yeah, they do. Uh, I was asking everybody to use my name as a friend and then I would get $25 and they would get $25 and, and the money that I received was would go directly to the Mother Earth Project, 100% of it. So that's what you might be thinking about, you know, by who, who referred you. Um, can you be a friend to the town? Can, can I? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can we get back that, that same rebate times what, three or four accounts? Yeah, that would be like a hundred hundred dollars that um, I could, you know, either give back to the town or I could put it in the Mother Earth Project, whatever it doesn't, or not do it at all. I don't have any preference, so it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add my two cents. That's up to the committee. I think if it can be done, if we can save a hundred bucks for the town, why not? Okay. Great. Yeah, I just um, I just renewed my contract with Clearview, and uh, they didn't. Um, when I renewed it, they didn't uh, send me a, a referral uh, thing to sign up for. So I don't know whether it's just not one of their current promotions or something right now. Right. Okay. Um, any more discussion? All right, Andrew, you want to? Do a motion. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I motion that we uh, recommend to the town to switch their uh, generation supplier to Clearview. Okay, you have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Donna. Um, okay, everybody in vote, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Awesome. Okay, moving on. Um, Thank you for that, everybody. Uh, apiary. Uh, excuse me, Barton. Steve here. Yes. Um, so I, I support the, the the idea of switching to Clearview, um, but I, I think we're going to need to present to the town some sense of whether or not there's a cost, an extra cost associated with this. It would be a reduced. You know, what will this do to our utility bills for the town? It would, it would reduce them. Okay, Clear, that's good. Yeah, Clearview is typically less or the same price. So okay. there's no- I'll, I'll just ask, I'll, I'll talk with you be, before the council meeting 
um, and, and get some additional material. And then I can provide it as part of the read ahead to the council members. Okay. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the, the next item is uh, APRAs, the B, B boxes um, update. I want to just give you a quick uh, informational update. Um, so um, Jack and I met with the beekeeper, Sarah Keel, and her husband, uh, Adam. Adam, thank you. They're very nice people. Um, we walked to see the site again next to the basketball court. And then we also went um, to the alternate site, which is one that Patty and I went over to see, which is about 100 yards from Wisconsin Avenue in the park there, the forest. It's a part of the area. It's the area right next to the creek where you have to uh, skip over the rocks to get into the forest, um, if that makes sense to people who've been over there. Um, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of small uh, newly planted trees there, but there is a space that's about 16 by 12, which is the space that she needs to put in four to six bee boxes. And uh, after just some discussion, you know, I don't think there's a slam dunk decision, but I think there is definitely a feeling that this alternate site might be a better place for the bees. Um, in general, there are some question marks from Sarah's point of view about whether Wisconsin Avenue would be close to the pollution of that sit street and whether that have, would have an adverse effect. Because you know, they do use smoke, um, Sarah does to, to, to um, um, uh, quiet the bees down. Um, so, you know, pollution is there anyway. She's, she wasn't like, overly concerned, but she was sort of like, you know, maybe this would be a concern. She just didn't know um, from a scientific point of view. Um, so that's one reason why we might do the alternate site. The other one is that with all the, the pedestrians walking down the streets that are not neighbors, unfamiliar with bee boxes, that there, there could either be uh, people throwing stuff at the bee boxes, uh, trash, uh, or coming to it, without really having a full understanding of the dangers, even though there'd be signage, as we already talked about before. Um, and also just having trash next to the sidewalks could be like sweets and stuff like that, which could also uh, be problems because the bees are attracted to sweets. Um, so based on that, it seems like the alternative site is gonna be a, a much better place um, to consider. Um, assuming that the town council talks about this topic this week, um, you know, the, the hope is that they will consider a vote in the beginning of April, April 5th. Um, we do need to move forward with this idea as soon as possible if we want to bring bees to our town this year. At, to remind you, the bees do not travel during the the months where they are creating honey, which is the warm months. So putting them in April, mid-April is sort of getting towards the end of the period where their dormant state ends and they become active. So my hope is that we would um, put uh, uh, the bees in place. I also talked to them about how we would bring the bees to that site. Um, we would probably need to drive a truck down through the forest there, um, which there is a space to come through there to offload the bee boxes because they're heavy. But we might be able to do it by hand if we get enough volunteers, which I'm sure that is possible. Um, and also, two other quick things: you know, the 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 bees' honey is harvested once a year in the early fall, like September, October, I don't know. And um, those costs, those weigh about 80 to 100 pounds. So we might need to have volunteers help them um, move the honey back to the trucks, um, her truck. Um, Sarah makes money by selling her honey. Um, and she sells each jar for, which is about a pound of honey for about $10, 10 or $12. And um, I talked to her about maybe making smaller jars um, 
for uh, to give away the town would buy and give away as gifts to new uh, residents or people that they want to honor. Um, and in addition to make the regular jars of honey uh, available to residents to buy, which would be a, just a wonderful way to engage the community in awareness of what we're doing. So there's a lot of good things uh, from this. Uh, I've already talked about other stuff like educational campaign and having uh, students come and, and whatever. So that's the update. Anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, just one thing, if you do propose that site, I think it would be a courtesy to talk to Matt Fink because his house is pretty close to them. He should know, you know what's happening. <clears throat> okay, that sounds reasonable. Um, it will be, yeah, the, the space in next to the tennis court and next to the basketball court is also probably <coughs> distance um, to that corner house on Dorset, but I think that's a good idea as well. Thank you, Patty. Marnie? When uh, I was at a meeting with Jeffrey and Matt on Monday to talk through getting ready for the work session, among other things, Jeffrey had a lot of questions, uh, which I, I actually couldn't answer. And I don't know what kinds of questions will come up at the work session, but the questions were things like, well, how was this person picked? And uh, right. were there other proposals considered? And isn't this like a procurement? I mean, I just, I just didn't have answers to the questions because I've only right. read what you've provided, so. Um, I would be happy to either answer them now for you or write you the answers, or I could come to that work session and speak for a brief time to answer them. How would you like me to do that? Well, we don't include other people in the work session. So, so if you have some in, uh, additional information, um, maybe you could provide that. Um, ahead of the meeting. And I don't know whether Steve could present it or I could present it. I don't know. Well, that's fine. One second, Jack. Um, I think, I mean, I did write in the original proposal that I had contacted the Beekeepers Association and, and vetted out n a number of people. And this was the best option. So that answers that question. I mean, can you tell me the questions that you want answered so that I know what to answer? They weren't my questions. It was really Jeffrey, just Jeffrey raised a bunch of questions. Well, you know, actually the purpose of the work session is to identify uh, what more information, if any, council members need to make an informed decision uh, at a council meeting and whether or not they think they have enough information or could have enough information by the council meeting to put it on the agenda. So um, my goal would be to not have too many open questions uh, tomorrow night so that people would be comfortable um, putting it on the April agenda at, because you're pointing out if we don't make a decision at the April meeting, yeah. uh, we wouldn't be able to do this this year. Okay, so why don't I write Jeffrey an email and ask him what his questions are tonight and, and I'll have them answered. Um, I think the only other question that has been brought up is about the liability issue, which I did have Matt investigate and he and his uh, his research revealed, as I said in the um, in the proposal that there's no issue with the liability. I wrote about that already. So I, I'll email Jeffrey tonight and ask him that. Just ask him if he's got some questions that you, you think he doesn't think the proposal answers that would be helpful for tomorrow night's work session. Exactly. That be, that, I think that'd be good. Okay. Jack, did you have a co comment? Just a quick comment. Uh, I've always been interested in apiary uh, in the backyard. And I went to the Beekeepers Association of Montgomery County and they are looking for places to put things. It's not like we're choosing one over the other. It's sort of like a volunteer open program, so. Okay, yeah, that is a true statement. Thank you for that, Jack. Okay, thank you for that, your comments. And let's move on to the, the next item, which is the climate emergency declaration. Um, Marnie has asked, because of the, the work session is filled with a lot of uh, items, she's asked if we would consider separating the two, 
the Paris Climate Agreement, joining that and the Climate Emergency Declaration, which I sort of spoke about and we spoke about it as one entity to separate the two. Um, in further conversations with Steve, he mentioned that it would be, uh, it might actually be beneficial in more ways uh, also because to declare the climate emergency speaks about the problem and then the Paris Climate Agreement talks about more about the solution. Uh, oh, Steve, why not I let you say it? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, well thank you, Barbara, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing just fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking for, for one thing for the council it would be a lot to, to digest all of the material about the climate emergency and then what it means to join the Paris Accord, where we are today, what are the actions recommended, what are the potential impacts on the town. And um, as I thought about it and discussed it with Barton, it seemed to me that there was real value added in separating things a bit. And, and one of the real value, uh, the, the, one of the real opportunities there is, um, I think that it, it increases the chance for the Environment Committee to communicate what's going on with the town, with the residents, and get more buy-in and involvement in what we're doing. Um, you know, so we can have the declaration of a climate emergency and work with part in the way that declaration is written, the council would actually be directing the environment committee to, uh, to do a few things, you know, to sort of study the issue and come back to the council. And with that, you know, you sort of have the, um, the, 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 the requirement or the, the authorization to proceed with hosting like a town forum to talk about the climate emergency. And you have a bit of time to have some volunteers, you know, figure out what our carbon footprint is roughly in the town and, and come back to the council maybe in uh, maybe the July timeframe or so to, to recommend that, um, and, and that the mayor sign on to the agreement or it's not actually signed the agreement. It's, it's that the mayor would state that we will uh, follow the agreement, uh, honor and support. Uh, oh, and, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I'm excited by it. I, I just, my thought was it'll, it'll be more effective mm -hmm. and smoother sailing to separate them. Thank you for that, Steve. And also to follow up on your ideas, I, I've been thinking of something else too. As far as the, you know, the idea is to follow and uphold the Paris Climate Agreement is really asking the town to do it. But our real hope is to, to, to engage the, the town residents in being a part of that, even though we can't enforce them to do it um, directly. And to that point, you know, the idea of having a forum is really cool. And, and another thing I thought about doing is um, my stepmom just had a birthday last week and my wife put together, there's a, there's a program where people send in 50, uh, 30 or 60 second videos of like, happy birthday, Trina, I hope you're feeling better, whatever. And then this, this company puts them all together. So in that, that idea of mine, I thought we could uh, ask residents to speak with their families for 30 to 60 seconds about what the climate emergency means to them, what their present sustainable actions are and what their future sustainable actions are going to be. And we make a, a large video montage, whatever, that can be shared uh, with the whole town and I think that'd be a powerful way. I mean, cause that's what this, that's what like the Mother Earth Project is all about. It's like sharing ideas and then you feel empowered. Like, hey, they did that. Why don't we, why aren't we doing that? You know, look, they're just, they're the same as us. Yeah. Uh, so I like Steve's idea of sort of, um, you know, the form idea and making it more of a, um, a town-wide uh, process. Any more, any discussion on this? About basically the, the idea is let's now ask uh, the town council to uh, discuss um, just doing a climate emergency declaration now. Um, and yeah. then we would continue the Paris climate uh, agreement in the coming months. Uh, 
with what I just said, but please let's start the discussion. Yeah, I just, um, this, this is more some thoughts around the specifics of the declaration itself. Um, I, it was from a view of kind of wanting to um, uh, maybe dispel some criticism. Uh, and if the de declaration talked more generally about a climate emergency, I, I, when I read through it, it goes into sort of specific detail about, you know, melting of the ice sheets and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, well, some people may dispute yeah. whether that's going on or not. And if we well, make it in general, um, you know, maybe it's going to be subject to less, uh, uh, less sort of criticism or, um, you know, get into a, a big controversy with people in the town, because I'm sure there's a wide variety of opinion amongst the uh, people within the town. <clears throat> so, Angie, are you suggesting, you saw the declaration that basically I wrote and with assistance of Stephen, do you want to, do you want to um, send some edits to, to the, to, to, to our committee about that? Yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, edits are great. That's fine. Please send us your edits. Um, if you could do it in the next, uh, by tomorrow morning, let's say at 10 or 11 a.m., because um, they have a work session tomorrow evening. Is that correct? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. So we need to have that so it can be shared. Um, okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll you try to do it. The call. So that we can um, um, push it on to the council members. Thank you, Andrew. Anyone else have comments? Okay. Um, other items. I forgot what the other item is. Uh, um, well, I just have a brief update on the solar panel project. Please. So um, I did speak to the contractor. Um, they they are a very uh, low staff, low cost kind of operation, and they do not do um, on site surveys uh, without a contract being in place. And so I couldn't persuade them to come and look at the site. They said they have um, a great deal of experience in uh, in you know working through proposals that they then implement uh, based on Google Maps and other stuff. And they felt, um, you know, despite not actually physically going to the uh, the sites, that they felt very confident that um, uh, what they were suggesting, and, and they did go over with me um, the tree removal that they would recommend, which is uh, which is, would be pretty extensive. Um, I yeah. doubt that the <laughs> given the town's uh, you know love of trees would yeah. go down very well. Um, it would need quite a lot of tree removal, both around uh, the garage um, and, and the, the um, town hall, as well as uh, quite a lot around the swimming pool. Um, yeah. he, did, he did suggest um, a couple of apps that I haven't actually downloaded yet that um, allow you to go to a specific site. And then if you have a tablet or something, um, they will, uh, simulate the path of the sun um, in any direction from that location at any time of year. So you can actually kind of stand somewhere and you can um, right. point That's the correct. tablet effectively at the view you're looking at and it will project on uh, to your tablet the path of the sun for any date and uh, time of the year that you give it. So um, I will see about if I can Put okay. that onto my uh, phone or my laptop and um, actually wander down there and see if I can confirm that for myself. But <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Andrew. Um, um, I'll just also say that you know when I was over there in the forest where the apiary alternative site is, you know that there is a larger space there that could potentially be a place for solar panels um, mm -hmm. towards Wisconsin Avenue. Um, that's an area that does have a uh, pretty wide open sky. Um, it's pretty good for it. So that's something we can consider. I don't know whether or not that will tie into our electrical system. I don't know whether that's, uh, you know, it seems like it's sort of far away from um, the electrical grid, Marnie. I don't know whether you have any thoughts on that, but we can look into that as an idea. Um, in the meantime, yeah, we have- yeah. Sorry? You would need separate um, 
permitting or something like that for that particular uh, location, given it's not on uh, on top of an existing piece of property, and that's probably a yeah kind of green uh, reserved space or something. Who knows? <clears throat> but, but in the meantime, we do have renewable energy as carbon credits. Um, mm -hmm. So, but thank you for that and keep us up to date. Um, I want to finish within the hour. So what was the last, the other uh, item was that the? Recommending to, <clears throat> for the FY22 budget, the um, purchase of the carbon offset. Is okay. that the right way to say it? Yes. Um, before we discuss that, did we want to talk at all about where we put these uh, Pepco uh, car chargers, the four of them, or do we want to put two of them like in the town parking lot and two of them down by the uh, pool? Uh, if we put it in the pool, that could be a problem though because they, they close the gate during the winter time, right? Yeah, so they close it at night. The, um, we have, the, these charging stations have to be open to the public, so right. we have to change the signage. Um, when I looked at the latest picture, which I don't know whether Matt sent you or not, but it looked to me like the four stations were right against the tennis courts as opposed to on the side, uh, on the other side. So uh, I don't, I didn't. The side didn't, of what? Well, there's, there, there's two sides to that parking lot. One which is backs right up to the tennis courts and one which oh. uh, backs up to the homes. And right. th these four stations are right next to the tennis courts. I didn't know how people would feel about that. Have, have, I don't know if you can just right. Let's see if I can. Yeah. So we if we need two and two. Um, I mean, four seems like a lot, but obviously, you know. Uh, I guess I'm wondering who's going to use them. Um, I mean, I think mainly the public will use them because I. I would guess that most people who have electric cars already have electric charging stations at their homes. At least it looks to like that to me mm -hmm. when I go around. I don't know, Barton, who do you think is gonna use the stations? You know, it's a very good question. Um, you know, I do know that when I need to buy uh, electricity like on the highway, that it's, it is more, you know, to charge my Chevy Bolt 200 miles costs about five or $10 you know, from empty to full, but to do it with these level two chargers that are run by ChargePoint or EVgo, it's gonna cost more, it costs like 30 cents a kilowatt versus six cents. It's like I thought they five, were cheaper. five times more. It costs five times more to, to charge it with these stations. So people who use them will probably not be our residents because if you're gonna buy one, you're gonna to wanna to install your own charger uh, or just plug it into your wall and do the slow charge, which is level one. And that would take you 24 hours. Jack? Yeah. Pepco wants to make money on this. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they're gonna probably- they're electricity. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna probably pass it on to a third party uh, person who's going to run it, the charge point and EVgo people. They're not going to actually, it's not going to be a Pepco station, but they will, they will be making money by selling electricity, correct? So I, mean, I think, I think they could be useful, you know, for um, people who have visitors who have to have an electric car and they're visiting if we had an electric truck, who doesn't have a charge. <laughs> bus, um, electric truck, visitor. Uh, you know, they may want to park their car there overnight, uh, you know, so they can get a, a, a quick uh, recharge from it. Or, you know, people down at the swimming pool in the summer, if they're going there for the day, can just, you know, leave their car and plug it in for the day. Um, I think the bottom have line we is... Had, have we had any inquiries from town residents saying, hey, could we put in charging stations? I've had a, a few people talk about it. It'd be great to have it. Um, but I mean, I, in some ways we have to imagine a future that we can't yet imagine. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, you know well, what I mean? I'm, I'm just thinking if most people in the town who, who need it already have their own charging stations. Right. And if nobody's asking for it, 
Right. What is that future? I mean, ha are we anticipating a future that will never come to pass because something else will have intervened? You know, do we, do we need four charging stations when we might be only serving people who come into the town just to charge their right. vehicles? And not only that, but if we do get electric, uh, if we do get electric truck, we probably will we install need. a level two charger inside the garage so that they could have their own, which will be cheaper electricity. It only costs like about $700 to install your own level two charger. I know that because I, it's, maybe it's $800. Um, so I, I don't really have the full answer to that, but I guess we don't really need to decide right now. Do we, Marnie? I mean, it, well, it's actually on the April, uh, probably the April agenda. Uh, Pepco is planning on being at the meeting to answer any questions people have. And tomorrow night, we'll be talking about it at the work session. And you all have recommended it already to the council, didn't you? For two station, two two stations. Um, I, for some reason, I'm having a um, uh, senior moment. <laughs> senior moment. Thank you. I don't even know what it's called anymore. Um, but I mean, I, I think I think it's good to have. I think it's good to have at least one or two stations there. Four seems like a lot. Um, I'm not quite sure what the purpose would be right offhand, but that's because I'm, I, I can't, I'm, I'm struggling to imagine the future, our future with electric vehicles. Uh, I just am. Besides the pool parking lot, is there anywhere else we, there isn't anywhere else in town we could recommend to Pepco, right? Somerset Elementary School or no? Yeah, but we, that's not our property. Doesn't the parking lot fill up in the summertime when people are, use, are swimming? No, we're talking about the tennis. Oh, yo, the pool parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that, and especially if there's a meet. Yeah, do, do we really want to devote two of those to a charging station, two, two of those spaces to a charging station which might not even be serving town residents? Well, I don't think we could do it because I don't think it would be, the, one of the reasons we locked the gate is a security reason because it's very dark back in there and there have been activities that uh, pro probably residents wouldn't be keen about. So we try and, and keep um, the gates locked so, so that there's a minimal opportunity. And if we had the charging station, there has to be public available to the public 24 hours a day. So we'd have to leave the gates open. Oh uh, yeah, that, that, would, that would definitely. Yeah, so we can't really consider the swimming pool as a I, I don't think we should. I, I would we'll like to just throw out an idea. I'll even make a motion if, if people agree to it that maybe we withdraw our recommendation and say, you know, maybe we'll recommend it in the future sometime when we see more of a need for it. W would that be a step backwards to withdraw the recommendation? Well, I, I was only thinking that um, if it's a publicly accessible place like the um, uh, the tennis court parking area, if you know the town uh, does have residents do have visitors coming in who have electric vehicles and they're visiting for the weekend and they're visiting someone who doesn't have a charger at their house like most people yeah. do, then they can you know use the use the charger in the town. I mean it's just sort of a convenience for um uh, for town residents and for guests of town residents, I suppose. And if it's if it's only two, which I think would, seems like a reasonable number, then um, I'm not sure what what the projection would be to have it at the yeah the tennis courts. I, <clears throat> I think that's very uh, a good imagination. I mean, the idea is that we're going to have more and more friends come to visit us, and they're going to have electric cars, and and we might not have it at our houses. But we would say, hey, please t bring your electric car. I really want to see it. And by the way, we have a, a, a station where you can charge it overnight. So, I mean, that seems like a great way. The second good thing that's good about it is that, you know, when, you, when I went to Tacoma Park and I saw the electric stations there, I was very impressed. I was like, wow, this town's really gone to the next level. It, it's, a, it's, a real, um, it's a real showcase in some ways, a visual showcase of what the town is doing. And so I would, I would like to continue the recommendation to have two 
um, in our in our in our tennis parking lot. I think I think Bugs brings up a really nice point. Um, so that's what that's what my feeling is, Jack. Yeah, I agree. Two, not four. Anyone else? I know Donna said she had to leave, so she's gone. Um, okay. So it seems like if it's okay, um, let's just keep it at two, Marnie. Well, okay, that's your recommendation. Well, yeah. well, I'll be sure and convey that tomorrow night. So what we, should we just make a, why don't we just motion it, Jack, go ahead and motion it if you wouldn't mind, if that's okay with you, Ralph. Go ahead. I guess I move that we continue our recommendation to the council that we have two ch charging stations, period. Okay, do you have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay. All right. Um, Ralph, I, I know that you, you, you were hoping to just get rid of it. I just think it's at this point, it's, it's something that could potentially be helpful in ways that we just don't imagine. That's early, I feel. So I don't mean to. Well, let me ask a couple of questions. First of all, how much will it cost us? And second, is there a chance to back out if if it's bringing in other than town guests, if it's, you know, bringing right. in other people? My understanding is it's free. Okay, that's good. Um, I, have a, I have this idea that it's going to be contractors because they're the ones who expressed an interest earlier. And if we're going to have contractors every night, then we're not going to have guests of town residents. Because once somebody's in it, they're right. in it. They're in it, right? Well, you mean having contractors charge their trucks there? No. I think that's actually a good thing. We, well, that we, might be. But but if, if we have two contractors, or if we have three who are always trying to get into the two spaces, and then... Uh, you know, I have a visitor who has a, a, a bolt. Right. There's no place for that person to charge their vehicle. So now you're actually making an argument that we might not have enough. Uh, <laughs> that we should have four. Uh, that wasn't the argument I was planning on making. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> that, I mean, we could have 100 you... and we probably, who knows, maybe we'd fill them. But is that what we really want? And And if the reason for it is to... Yeah, to serve visitors of people of town residents, then is that going to be effective? And, and, and I guess my question was, if it's not working out the way we want, is right. there a chance to say, hey, we don't want to do this anymore? That's can a question. We that back out of this once we're in it. Maybe Marnie can uh, address that. Uh, if things don't work out, can we back out at some point? after they've put it in that's a question we can ask tammy next week i don't know the answer to that question but i think that unknowingly ralph you've brought up some even more uh captivating uh reasons to to have maybe even more but i see i'm starting to see that having these stations serve our community in ways that that are still unforeseen one is what bug said about neighbors coming to town Two is with these landscaper trucks or subcontractors, we want to encourage people to bring their electric trucks into our town. Therefore, we don't have um, gas powered vehicles coming into our town. So that promotes electric cars um, in ways that we can't even imagine at this point. So uh, I think it's a net positive. Um, okay. I, we, we have to wrap things up, but we, I, I think we, the two things that I really was hoping to finish with is one, uh, Steve Circo asked that we um, add some money for the leaf blower um, um, educational materials. Uh, you know, I, I think I asked for Steve, was it like $500 to, or $400 for like 
putting stuff in the um, um, the town journal and distributing stuff. And you said that we should consider a larger budget uh, or up to a, a ceiling that's larger. Right. Right. Because we want this, it's really important that this, um, this ban um, be instituted in a, in a smooth way that um, disrupts my, in particular disrupts minority owned small businesses as little as possible, um, that informs residents so there's no surprise or confusion. And that's gonna take some efforts. That's gonna take um, outreach to, uh, to, the, to the landscapers. It's gonna re require development of uh, bilingual pamphlets, passing them out. Uh, might require some special town forum or training sessions. It just seemed to me like um, you, you might want to bring in a consultant for 10 or 20 hours or something to help out. And with that in mind, I would, have rec I would recommend asking for a, a budget of maybe $2,000. Okay. Well, seeing that this is unique to all of us, this, this educational campaign. Um, you know, $2,000 is, um, is not the price that we would necessarily um, uh, have to spend, but it would be a ceiling amount. So you're basically saying that up to exactly. Right. So, you know, in the end, we might not necessarily have to spend half of that amount, but you're recommending that we sit, we recommend to the town council that that there should be a leaf blower um, budget up to two thousand dollars. Okay. Any discussion? That's about for that? FY twenty two. Uh, is that what it's called? The next year coming up. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Zach. Uh, should we broaden it to education in general, not just the leaf blowers, and maybe it's more than two thousand sustainable gardening practices? Yes, all of the above. Well, that is actually what we're doing. It's not just about leaf blowers, but I was just using that as your catchphrase, but you are right. So we should word it in that way. Any other discussion, comments about that? And by the way, Kumar, if you wanna have something to, that you want to share at the end. I see there's a public set comment section, so I, please don't let me forget that. Um, okay, so uh, Jack, do you want to do another motion, please? You're good at it tonight, so give it a go. I'm not quite sure what the motion would be. Okay, the Environment Committee recommends to the council that we set, that we request funds for education on environmental issues not to exceed two thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. For related to sustainable gardening, uh, all of the above, yes. Okay, Barton, you adjust it very well. So, okay, uh, okay. Do I have a um, a second to that? I second. Okay, great. Uh, vote. Uh, raise your hand or say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Okay, we're at the hour mark. Do we have time to, 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 to fulfill uh, Marnie's request about uh, recommending a budget for carbon offsets, um, like uh, to, towards what Andrew was talking about, basically saying um, to the town that we recommend that you buy carbon offsets for, um, for the, the gas furnace in the town hall. Um, I'm assuming there's a furnace there. I'm not sure what it, what it burns. Do you, Marnie, do you know what it burns? Is it electricity or? Town hall is a heat pump. I see it every day. Um, it's electric. Yeah, the uh, most gas I think we use is at the swimming pool for the gas heaters. Okay, so that's an obvious, a uh, huge carbon, uh, offset that we could recommend to the uh, town. Uh, are there any others that come to mind? We obviously can amend this later on. Um, but that would I don't think... be something to put in the FY22 budget. Right, 
So this would be to purchase carbon offsets for the pool gas and other things that we're trying to think of at the moment. Andrew suggested the trucks and the, the town vehicles. Town I'm, vehicle. I'm only suggested it because Andrew suggested yeah. it and I said, make it a budget item if you want to do it. Correct. I, would, I guess for the, for the town, given it's um, larger, Usage of gas and stuff it might might amount to um, you know maybe a thousand or more dollars a year. So it's I think it's a good suggestion, money to, to put it in the in the town budget. Um, okay. Should we start with just those two, or do we want to add any more? Do we have to be specific? Uh, just uh, offset the town's carbon footprint. Yeah, I would just just be generic rather than specifying things, um, and then um, you know if, if Matt wants some help in identifying things, he can come talk to us. But if it's a generic thing, it says you know the, the okay done by carbon uh, credits to offset the, mm -hmm. the carbon footprint of the of the town. <clears throat> we can specify this um, this website as a uh, as one way to do that by right? you know. Um, yeah, it's not. Um, well, I I use that one because it's um, it's got some user friendly interfaces and it's, it's easy to sign up to. But I think there are um, a number of other uh, places you can you can do the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so basically, Angie, why don't you give a, a go at this motion, if you would, please? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I motion that um, we recommend to the town council that they um, uh, consider adopting a budget item for the uh, town to procure uh, carbon credits to offset the carbon footprint of the town's activities. Excellent. Do I have a second? I second. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Excellent. Okay, um, anybody have any public comments? Uh, we have Kumar on the line. Um, I'm not sure whether, ha happy that you have joined us, Kumar, but uh, I'm not putting you on the spot. Um, okay. Thank you, Bard. No, I don't have any comments. Okay, great. Um, any other items before we bring this to a close? Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming uh, with short notice. We, we've accomplished a lot more than I even imagined. Uh, I didn't realize it would go for an hour, but I really appreciate everyone's input. Oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, Andrew, I have a question. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but since Dave is not here today, would you consider writing the minutes for this meeting for this one meeting, please? Oh, um, <laughs> I, I would, but I haven't actually been, uh, I didn't make any notes or anything. So. Well, I have the video recorded. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, I, no, I'll, I'll, I can do that, yeah. Sorry, I thought you were like, uh, can I have me try and do yeah. it from memory? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I have it recorded, uh, and so you can just sort of skip through it and say, oh yeah, I remember this, I remember this, that would be, Huge. I really appreciate that. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice evening. What's left of it? See you next month. <laughs> next yeah. month. Bye. Bye.